feeling that way. God gives all the glory. That's why we always teach that no matter what you go through, we say, we teach you before you even get into crisis that God is good. And most people understand that they, they don't, when stuff starts happening, they don't think God's good. They're like, no, all the time God's good. Even when you think things are not working it out or you think a different outcome, God is still good. You know, so we don't have to worry about circumstances. We don't go by circumstances. God has a plan. Remember, that's why I always put that up there. For I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper. So what happens is when you get disappointment, you have an expectation. And God teaches to have biblical promised words from his word expectation, but not to have expectations of our own. We're supposed to have expectations of what God says. So we know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for what? Doctrine, reproof. I keep talking teach about teach about reproof because most people don't understand what reproof is. Reproof, this word right here, is something that most people don't hear too often in everyday English uh, conversation. But um, it's also a word of a correction that we need to learn. That is also another form of correction. And it's, it's with intent. We're going to reprove you. Or we, another word to use in the Bible is called rebuke. You know, because we do that with the spirit. Our sickness is even say, we rebuke you. We're going to correct that. That's not right. That's not supposed to be there. Get out of there. So you're basically rebuking it. You're reproofing it. So therefore, you have a right. So it's another, it's another form of correction. And the word is used for to correct you. The word of God has everything in it. 2 Timothy 3.16 is all you need to hear what God says that this word would do for you. It's to correct, the reproof, correction, and for instructions in righteousness, which is my favorite because like I told you, I was a living witness that I had been in church for 20 years and I was very inspired because all the type of teachings I got was about inspiration, about how much God loves me and how, how one day I'm going to go to heaven. I was very inspired. Yes, one day I know when I die, I'm, going, I'm inspired. But when it came to regular everyday living, I didn't have a clue how to do it. And I started looking at funny at Father God and says, hey, where you at? Yay, heaven's good, but what about now? You know, so so that's what I, I you see me, I always seem like I get perky up when I get to instructions and righteousness because I finally got instructions from the Bible. I never knew that the Bible had so many instructions in it because a lot of people really don't teach the instructions. They just teach the inspirational side of God and they just tell you the end game about, you know, um, God wants you blessed, God wants you to be prosperous, God wants you to be healthy. But I didn't know in the kingdom of God, it's just like a city, you got to do something. It's like saying, it's like saying in America, like um, the an American government and the United States of America want you to have a driver's license. You're like, yay, that's good. And you're like, okay, how come I ain't got it? Oh, because you go down there, you got to start, oh, then you got to pass a test. Oh, and then you, <laughs> see, a lot of people get confused with that because God does have instructions. That's even instructions for prayer. There's definitely instructions for family. There's instructions for marriage. You'd think that if, we, if the church knew that it has so many instructions for marriage that they would have much difficulty, just like the world has for, for marriage. What's with that? How could you have an instruction manual? Well, think about our own life. Nobody likes to read instructions. Nobody likes to read instructions, especially men. We're prideful. I mean, Christmas, man, I remember I used to go, I could do it. You put it good, gotta go here, and then like, man, and then it never works. The way, it, watch this, it never works the way it was originally designed to function. Say that again. It never it never works what? The way it what? Originally designed, and that's the way our life is. It never works the way we were originally designed to function because we don't use instruction. You know, it's the same stuff. I'm like, wow. It avoids what, what, what's some of the stuff? And you get mad at the, these people. They made this raggedy stuff. And you go and read the book. And they start telling you all the warning signs. Before you do this, make sure you do this. Don't go and do that with marriage. Before you get married, what? First thing, make sure they are what? Say, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you got some instruction here. And if you bypass that, and I get with some people sometimes, I'm like, did you? Did you read the instructions before you did it? Like, no, you know, we, I kind of thought, I kind of thought, and I kind of saw, and I just thought that it would work out. I said, that's not right. I said, I'm not making, I'm not kind of condemn you because if it's failing and it's messed up. I'm just, I just don't ever want you to say it was God's fault. Or watch this, the designer's fault. You can't do that because that's what people do. They blame God. So many people blame God. They say, don't come to God because their life fell apart. And they don't even know, like, you are out there <laughs> taking your stereo and throwing it in the pool 
and there's not water resistance, let me throw that in there, and you pull it out like this, stupid thing don't work. Well, that's what we do our life. We can't do it. This is why I stay on the Word. I'm like, dude, just go back to the Word. The Word will tell you which one, how, how to do this. And then it should work. Then you can go to my Father. He even tells you, he said, I'm going to tell you, put me in remembrance of my Word. He's telling you that. I give you charge, but see, most people can't go because they know they haven't did his word. So they can't put him in remembrance of his word. Like, Father, you said, now, now if I do, key words, if, key words, if I did, I execute a promise in the Bible that you would show up. But most people don't execute it. And if they do it, they'll do it wrong. Or they do it half, half wittily, just like I see we do people. Well, I'm a personal trainer, so I see people half lifted in the gym, half committed, half formed. And they're like, man, it just don't work. I like all it is is the laws that God put in the in the in the, in the world called the laws of physics, you know, uh, laws of force. It works for anyone. You don't never say, "Man, gravity don't work for me." That's why every day I get, I walk out the door, I make sure I tie myself down before I go because I might float away. No, you can't do that. Gravity works for everyone because God is consistent. That's one thing I want to. I'm trying to bring back to the body of Christ is that God is not the altar of confusion. He's clarity in what he wants you to do. He wants you to know the will, his mind, how he thinks, what he feels about it, what you're doing, and how his ways are. Jesus is the way, the truth, the light. He wants you to know all that. We try to pretend like, well, you, you know, he's so mystical. He's only mystical because you won't go and read the love letters that he wrote you. You ever see somebody like, hey, before you were born, again, for us, <laughs> Father, has some letters written for you. For you to know about how he felt about you. What he left you. What he wants to give you. You know, so this is the main thing that we got to get back to the word of God. Because we got away from this. You can have church without the word. I've seen that. I used to visit some church. I can believe that. They never opened the Bible. There was not no scripture. And they had church. I'm like, so what are we doing? They had a program. It's an inspirational program. I was talking to a pastor the other day. He's like, Talking about how they have, you know, a lot of more motivational speakers are now coming to some of the major churches. I'm like, I have a problem with that because I believe in teaching people with the business and stuff like that aspect. But that's not supposed to replace the word of God. God's not watching over a motivational speech. He's watching over his word to make sure he perform it. We gotta write it down the word. Watch this, it says right here. Jeremiah 1 12 says, I watch over my word to perform it. Jeremiah 1 and 12. So God's not watching over programs. Uh, a motivational speech, even though some people, especially now, and some like, for instance, I don't know the, the insecurity that social media has created for the millennials. They need to be motivated. They need to be motivated just get up out of the bed, <laughs> you know. So everybody needs motivation now. Like, what you mean motivation? Motivation for what, man? I'm just trying to inspire somebody to do what? Every day, like they don't want to even get up and just do regular living life. When I grew up, they have to be motivated to do it. Uh, the question of, I mean, because you used to have like one or two percent who wouldn't want to think about, you know, you got to raise up and go to high school for you to learn to read and write and comprehension. Well, now it's like, it's like a task, like I got to be motivated to do that. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I have to be motivated to do everyday living. Are you kidding me? So that's how bad Satan has made us, uh, did his job in confusing us. Because this is his world system. God says that we know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under control of the evil one. How could God say something like that? You know, God, you, you're powerful. You can do anything. And here's God trying to tell you, remember I told you he wrote these letters to know, let you know what kind of game that you're in. It's not a game really like God says. This is the life or the situation that you're in. So a lot of people are like, God can do anything. So why would, so when things start happening, I had somebody tell me the other day that they was thinking like, that God gave them a headache. And you know, it's hard for me to hear stuff like that because I, you know, I'm like, you're ignorant, you don't know God. <laughs> you know, you perish from a lack of knowledge. You know, that's what God says. Or, now I like the lack of knowledge, that's being nice, but it says you perish because you're ignorant. You're perishing because of your ignorance, meaning you don't know. So therefore, God has talked to us about how Satan, he says, now you guys are down in the place where Satan is in control of the world system. What he didn't say is he is in control of you. Satan has a system that you walk in, but that's not nothing different. That's why Jesus showed up with the kingdom of God 
Because remember, when he showed up in his day, the Roman rule, the Roman government was over uh, his, his the Jewish people anyway. It didn't mean anything to him. He says, yeah, so that's like Satan being overruled over them. Even though Satan's overruled on, on Romans too. Let me get that correct because it might be out there. <laughs> but, but you always over some type of person. All the stuff in the Old Testament, when you read about uh, all the kings, Nebuchadnezzar, in the Old Testament, you're going to see God's people under somebody else's control. He never lets them be under control by themselves. Once he, they decide, you remember Mount Sinai told you the picture, he wanted to be, he says, I want to be over control of you. you I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. And they, they, they say, no. He says, you don't understand, if you don't do that, you're going to wind up being under control of somebody else. And God wanted to be say, I want you to be totally under my control. I'm going to take care of you. And Jesus did the same thing. In the New Testament, he tells them, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. So they're so they walking in like, dude, for real, you want me to be, that's like, you want me to totally just consume everything about you in and out, meaning you basically want me to be totally dependent on you. And that's the reality as you grow in God, you're going to realize that he's trying to get you to do anyway. He's like, don't worry about it. he tell you, watch this. Just seek the kingdom of God and my righteousness and don't worry about nothing else. Every day your brain struggles with that because you're trying to figure out, well, how does that work? I got stuff I got to do, ambitions, goals. I got bills, <laughs> you know. So he's telling you, just seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else should be good to go. I remember the first time I read that, I'm like, this don't make no sense, this is. <laughs> you know, the five senses is the one that says see, smell, touch. Then I'm like, I'm like, that's not, that's not practical. First of all, I didn't know what righteousness was, and I didn't know what the kingdom of God was. So I'm at a dilemma right there. And Jesus said, This is the only thing you're supposed to be down here doing. Is seeking the kingdom of God. I'm at a dilemma. This should have took me to this is shut down church when I first heard that. And says, you need to go in this room and stand here until you figure out what the kingdom of God is and righteousness is. Because anything else you're doing, you're wasting your time. Because she says, you, if you're not, you're going to start seeking with the, the kingdom of darkness system with Satan's rules in 1 John 5, 19 that God talks about. And he says, for he has rescued us from that system, the kingdom of darkness, and transferred us to the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1, 13. Now, see here God says, now you're in that system, but I actually rescued you out of that system. But I'm going to send you back, but you're supposed to use a different system, and you're supposed to use a system called the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He brought it back. He says, now you guys are good. Use this system. Use this system. And nobody says, no. We like our religion. We like our stained glass windows. We like our burning the candles. We like our talking to the Virgin Mary. We like our, all that craziness that has nothing to do with God. Jesus even told him, rebuke you, your traditions and your, your tradition is yours, not God's, and your, you know, uh, he says, all yours, it's not mine. So when, first thing I started doing, I came to God, I started cutting out anything, all that old stuff that I know, like, is this of you, God? He's like, no, throw in the trash, trash. What about this, Lord? No, trash. So I cleaned up my life, and then I got clarity of the word. The same word that I used to know without the traditions became so easy and clear. That's why I can simply what you guys are talking about. Do this, do that. Do that. I got to do this, this, this. As soon as I hear something. The same way Jesus used to respond. There was nothing you could bring up to him that he could not respond to. And he has taught his disciples to do the same thing. Matter of fact, he got outraged with them when they didn't respond that way. We're going to see a passage tonight where Jesus gets a little outraged with them because they, he's thinking like, okay, guys, I've been training you. Now, now you do it. And they like, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. And we're going to see why. Expectations of God for his children. God has expectation for his children. Watch this. Expectation of God and his children. Watch this. For his children. Watch this. Where, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. God says, now you used to walk to that dark system that Satan. The one you're in right now, he says, but you don't walk to it. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. So you're not walking in the system. You're just here. All right. According to the prince of the power of the air, the prince, the prince means ruler, the ruler is Satan. Satan stopped when he got kicked out of uh, heaven. He stopped in the atmosphere reign where they talk about where the stars and stuff are like that, that heaven reign. And he rules that system. That, that's where the airways are traveling. 
That's why people always talk about watch all these movies. The first thing they worry about, how can we take out one of these satellites? Where's the satellites out? Now in space, isn't it? Because whoever, whoever controls the airways controls the message. You controls the message, you control the thoughts. You controls the thoughts, you control the people. I can make you think anything. And I told you when I watched a lot of the movies, I remember the time I was rooting for in the Fast and Furious, I was rooting like, oh, get away, get away, get away. And they just got you robbing the bank. I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, these guys are criminals. And you want them to get away. Because my thoughts, they got caught up. I said, wow, think about this. You're dashing that steel. Come on, get back. <laughs> Put your hand to salvation. Dashing that steel. Bang, bang. Dashing that kill. You know, no, but I was caught up, you know, <laughs> you know, just, and it gets you, and it's very cunning the way he does it, you know, because he go, he has a way, God said, he's talking good, 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 bad, and bad, good, and he'll make you fall in love with a criminal, and you will hate a good guy. Don't have me go there tonight, because <laughs> I'm telling you, he is notorious for it. When I see the masses going for it, like, we're doomed, we're doomed. That dude got masses of people believing this person and hating this person. I'm like, wow, what the power they have with media. The power of media. You're like, and if you was to sit down and meditate, why you believe and think, my wife would say it this way, think about what you're thinking about. Used to bug the heck out of me, but I get it now. She's like, you think about what you're thinking about. You know, so why do you think that way? You're like, I have a thought. And the way you get stuff like this, you have to ask the question. And everybody, Jesus loves questions because you become a student then. And he always is a master teacher. So you, have, you don't question God, you have questions for God. That's how I learned a lot. I just go and ask God. If any man lack wisdom, let him what? Ask God. You're not questioning God. You have a whole bunch of questions for him. He says, good, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. What, what, what's next? All right? God wants to teach you something. What's the difference between, watch this. I'm going to get mess with you tonight. What's the difference between a believer in Christ and a follower of Christ. A believer in Christ and a follower in Christ. Anybody know? Your pastor always leads to some of this stuff. A lot of believers don't have a clue. I, I can actually believe in Christ and things that he does. A follower I think that they don't tell me that he is. Um, my life is lined up with him. Okay. She says, uh, so the first part you said I can actually believe in Christ that he does or did? Yeah, I can believe in everything that he says. You believe in everything he said? Okay. And I follow it, I'm going to do everything he does. Okay. She said one, one just believes everything that God says, and the other one does what he says. Okay, that's that's in the ballpark. You need to hear that. What's the difference between a believer's believers in Christ? Because once you believe God, the first thing he does, he transfers you from darkness and puts you into the kingdom of his dear son. So he sets you in Christ. You gotta be in Christ or you're either in Adam, all right? So true, so the big difference, what's the difference between believers in Christ and followers of Christ, all right? Uh, believers in Christ. See, we got a technical difficulty tonight, but I'll just, I'll read it out to talk to you loud tonight about it. Believers in Christ, for everyone who calls on the name, I'll give you a word first. Believers in Christ, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Romans 10, 13 and Acts 2, 21. Basically, if to be a believer in Christ, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know somebody who actually did that in the Bible? Who called upon the name of the Lord and God saved him? The the, which one? The believing thief on the cross. Be specified because there was two. That one who did not call on the name of the Lord. So the believing thief on the cross did not. <laughs> no, that's that's the screen that I had. <laughs> the believing thief on the cross. You won't be able to take pictures tonight, I don't think. <laughs> but uh, the believing thief on the cross, because he called him the name Lord. He says, if you are the Son of God, remember me when you get to your kingdom or your paradise. He said, Jesus says, just from that confession alone, this day you shall be with me in paradise. So that's all you have to do to be a believer, you have to believe. Most people like to set believers in the same category as atheists. Now, atheists just don't, I don't believe in God. Agnostic says, I don't know. You know, uh, but guess what? That ain't going to happen to them. That ain't going to fly with God because every knee going to bow and every tongue going to confess. God's not going to make them. They're going to like, I kind of knew. But down there, I have some arrogance and pride that I didn't want to say. 
But that's what's going to happen. The truth's going to be because God has given every man a measure of faith. And he says why? To believe. <laughs> you know, so that ain't going to fly either. So everyone call the name of God. So you got Romans 10, 13, Acts 2, 2, 21 tells you that. It's just straight out the Bible. Anyone, anyone, all, race, tree, color, it don't matter. All, everyone who calls on his name shall be saved. And why is it so easy? Really? Is that easy? Because Jesus, for that area of your life, did all the work. All the work for that. That's why. It's not just because, that's why most people are religious because they feel like I have to do something. Because like, there's no way you just sit there and just believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He came down and died for my sins and made me clean before the Lord, which is our God. It's hard for people to believe that. They don't know, like, what do you think that dude did for three? He was down here for three and a half years. I mean, he was here for uh, 33 years, but three and a half years he did the work. And he told you, now it's fulfilled. And he said, it is finished, the work. There was work involved. I told you, there's never going to be anything where there's no work involved. We are even created for good work. Work was involved in it. It's going to be faith and works. So he says, faith without works is dead. He did the work. Okay, so that's all it is. It's just that simple. All right, so that makes you instantly a believer in Christ. He takes you uh, out of Adam and he sticks you and drops you in Christ. And now God would never say no to his son, never get rid of his son, never rebuke his son. That's what the prodigal son is all about. He was always a son. Now that son might act like a prodigal, go out there and stop with the hog. He's still a son. He starts off with the prodigal son. Not the prodigal human. The prodigal is the prodigal son. You know, so a lot of people try to make that to all that since when I once was blind, I once was like, no, 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 you were far away from God. You were never in the family. But once he sets you in Christ, you can become a prodigal son. Happens all the time. Trust me. I know. <laughs> Praise God. Now watch this. Believers in Christ. That's all it takes. Now here's the follower. Now what's, what's the follower? Aren't we all followers? Well, what I say? It says, then he said to the crowd... Be a crowd. If any of you want to be my follower, specific, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and then follow me. All right? So did the believing thief on the cross follow him? He wasn't a follower, was he? He was a believer. All right? And we got plenty of that. And that's why you run into a lot of people. This is why I be on you about business decisions, even um, putting uh, church officials in office. What you're doing, you're taking a lot of believers and you say, since they believe, we can use them. These people are not following Christ. You're not supposed to marry them. Matter of fact, it gets deeper where Paul still tells you, don't hang out from such turn away. Don't hang around those type of people. He never tells you about the sinners because Jesus wouldn't hang out with the sinners. Why? Because the sinners don't know no better. The believer knows better. He just decided not to follow that's why Jesus told him when he says, now, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And this is what you're saying is a hard saying, meaning you've got to follow me 100%. You have to give up yourself. And it's like, what you're saying is a hard saying. They said they left him and they never, watch this, followed him anymore. They say they stopped believing in him. They just never followed him anymore. So what's the difference? You know, just keep it plain and don't let nobody, let's say, try to twist you up and some religious people, you know, because the scripture going to tell you right there what it is. It's the difference between somebody who believes in God and one who follow. And if you believe by faith and God regenerates your heart and takes you and sets you in Christ, you're saved. You're saved from the wrath of God for the final ending. But you're not saved for this world stuff because you're not using the wisdom of God. You're not operating in the kingdom of God. That's what followers do. Jesus was actually teaching them how to follow me. You'll follow me because I'm teaching you how to operate in the kingdom of God and use the wisdom of the heavenly father. But if you don't follow God, you're not going to have the wisdom of God because you're not asking, you're not seeking, you're not following. Or you're not going to operate in this system. So all the stuff that I grew up watching, inspirational preaching, talking to me, that was for the follower. It was not for the believer. The believer has access. Why? You're in the family. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the family have access to the father and the mother. And you're natural. 
But they had rules. You don't do this, we're not going. You're not going to Disneyland. They are. They follow my direction. They clean their room. They brush their teeth. <laughs> you know, they follow the instructions of the mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? But the one that no, and you should know why you're not going. It's not gonna be looking for you. I don't know why mom won't let me go. Did you know? <laughs> and I want to get the church back there. Quit playing games. Just say I don't want to do it. You know, but I want to make it clear. God says, make it, make the, make, write the vision, make it plain for everybody to understand. God is not the author of confusion. We need to understand what God talks about. And he's telling you, there's a big difference between a follower and a believer. Now, we know followers are believers, but you took it to the next level. You went with Jesus says now. If any man come after me, let him pick up his own cross. You know, let him deny himself, one version says. Deny yourself. And uh, take a cross daily. Well, you don't need it. What you think you need a cross for? Jesus died on the cross. What you need? You gonna die one? How about it? What you need a cross for? What do you think? Albert? What do you think you need a cross for? What would God tell you to get your own? An example of like dying to yourself, sacrifice, uh, submitting. He said, "Be an example of dying to yourself." And submitting. Could you give me a natural example of your everyday walk where the cross would come in handy when you have to use it? Marriage. Marriage would be the environment. So give me specific. Give me a specific. Marriage would be the environment. He says you're going to take that cross to your marriage. Okay, now you're going to use it. You going to hit your wife's side of the head with your cross? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm going to use it, man. Woo! <laughs> you know, come on. I told you, you got to get practical. I'm going to be on you. I'll be going to the next level. We're not growing over the next year. We're going to be on it. <laughs> you gave the example of how you die to yourself. To die to yourself. So when would you have to die to yourself in the marriage? When you're not being used to well, I'll say this. You have your own way of doing things. There's only a one thing to be done, right? Mm -hmm. And the other person can have your ways of one thing to be done. Okay. Because you have to give yourself in your ways to the other person your best interest. Okay. It's not about you. I like that. My wife is explaining about how when you come to a conflict, you're so used to doing your thing because you've been single <laughs> or still have a single mindset. You may have to be single. you got a single mindset still. And you're so used to doing things your way. You get your cross. He's like, you know what? I'm a the reason why you need that cross because people don't understand submitting one to another because you're supposed to, supposed to, both are supposed to do it. The Bible says submit yourself one to another. In Ephesians, besides Ephesians 5, it's also later on tells us that you submit yourself one to another in the fear and reverence of God. So in a marriage, you're both supposed to submit to one another. You know, because like I said, you got strengths and weknesses. You both don't have, if you both have the same strengths and the same weaknesses, you're in trouble. Because some supposed to fill that gap. All right, but you need that cross because it's not submitting if you're in agreement. All right? And most people are like, oh, no, you do it because you agree. You need a cross for a disagreement. <laughs> that's where you're going to need a cross. Because you're not going to agree. You're going to say, okay, uh, that's what you want to do. You know, and you're going to need the cross to, to do it in a loving way. Because anybody can be flipping it with it. That's what you want to do, fine. When it falls apart, let me know. You know, you can do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and that's not going to bring the love. That's not bring the love. <laughs> you know. And that's what people do. They think, no, I let them do I let them this way all the time, or her way all the time. But look how you're doing it. <laughs> you you, you, you got to do it in a mannerism, like, you know what? You know, let's agree to, to disagree. But hey, hey, baby, if you think that's the best way, it's on you on this one. You know, I'm going to get on my cross. You know, but you're sitting there hoping, I hope he fail, I hope he fail, I hope she fail. <laughs> you can't be doing that. <laughs> you can't do that. That's wrong. That's your partner. <laughs> all right? So this is why you'll need a cross. I'm glad I brought it up because you need to understand this is why you need to pick your cross and you'll need it daily. I mean, when you start getting to the point where y'all are irritating each other and you can't stand to hear a person's voice, you need the cross. You need to go and pull it out the box, <laughs> dust it off, <laughs> and get on there for a minute. I'm just going to get up and cross for a minute. Mm -hmm. You have to do it, man. I'm telling you, just don't let Satan you know, get a strong head or beat your head because once you get a stronghold in your marriage, Communication is going to shut down. And when communication shut down, you become, oh, I can use this term because that's the same thing happening with God. You become, have a religious marriage. 
you have the form, but you deny the intimacy, which is power. You know the closeness and the ooh and all ah and God, guys, people believe that fades away even after so many years. I'm like, remember why I still do it? And I know the only reason we do that because of, we made it our marriage a priority. And we, we made it a priority, you know, so we have a chance to understand the importance of a marriage, that you can do this and still be madly in love with each other years after years after years, even through the difficult times. But that's what that cross is for. You know, you got to, the reason why we don't like doing it because we really don't have no confidence in God. We don't think God's going to show up and help you out in your relationship. And that's an area of your life, finances, relationships, all crazy. You think God ain't going to show up. That's why God says perfect love casts away fear. And how does faith work? Faith works about what? The perfect love of God. See, and that's why we that's why we have a hard time dealing with people. Because we like, we, we, if I don't handle it, he ain't showing up. He don't care. He cares about everything. He knows the numbers on your head. He knows everything. He knows it before it even happens. Oh, they're about to have an argument on Wednesday. <laughs> you know, he knows that too. So that's the God I'm trying to reintroduce back to the church. Father God who loves and knows everything about you, about your detailed life, and he does care. We just got to come back to the Father the way he wants us. He's a king. Approach him. You can go to him and start seeking him more. Don't give up on him. A lot of people don't seek him no more. And he hates that. Oh, he can't stand to be ignored and not be believed in. Watch this. The second one. And anyone who does not take a Watch this. I do this for bonus because I'm like that. You know how you pass it. <laughs> he says, watch this. He says, and anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Matthew 10, 38. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> he just threw that in for good measure. And if anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me, he's not worthy of me. What does it mean? That means I'm not saying no, he didn't say that. He said you're just not worthy of him. Because you're not following him. When those guys left him, he says you're gonna leave. He turned to his four disciples and said, Hey, this is your opportunity to bail out. They're leaving me. Are oh, you gonna leave too? Because I'm not changing my message. I'm not changing my message. You're gonna have to be all in with me. You have to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness with all your heart, all your mind to get with this thing that we're doing. If you don't, it won't work the same way. It won't work. Nothing works unless you work all in with the Father. God wants you to be all in. He don't want you to be shrouded of defense. He don't want Satan. He wants to be like Jesus says, Satan, you have nothing on me. Because Satan always wants to say, as soon as you get bold, call yourself being the bold. He says, I got something. <laughs> He's going to try to get you. And there's nothing really he can do you if you know who you are and know how the system works. You're like, well, yeah, I did say that. I did that. That's over. That's been washed by the blood. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. I'm good. See, if you put him in remembrance of the word, when he brings you up with some past stuff that you did, you put him in remembrance of God's word that God, that Jesus has already did. Okay? And keep yourself for you can be bold. That's why you have confidence. Cast not where your confidence well, it has a great reward. You are confident not in just yourself. You're confident in who God said you are. My father said I'm still good. So you can talk about me all you want. God said I'm good. That's all you want. So you and you want to be, that's why God wants you to be leaning totally. Love him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. For when you get opposition from people, places, things, situations, that it's okay. I got my father. I got my father. It's okay. So yeah, he said. Jesus just threw that in there for some reason. I don't know why I wrote it. I mean, he said it, I said it. You know, it sounds pretty funny to me. <laughs> Characterized by disobedience. God wants us to see the difference between the children of disobedience and the one who's not. Um, let's take a look at what's the children of disobedience? What do you think the children of disobedience? Who, who would be a children of disobedience? What do you think of children of disobedience? You know the scripture? Okay, Ephesians 2 2 says, The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Ephesians 2. He's talking to a, the Ephesians. He's talking to Ephesians. Well, I have you out. He's talking to Ephesians church. So if he's talking to the church, that means they're what? They are believers. They're in Christ. So they're, but, but anybody has some kids? That what this will be? <laughs> so God had God. So therefore, I used to think the children of disobedience once worked in the children of disobedience. I think now he's talking about the people who never accepted Jesus. No. We got some people who still walk in disobedience. Why? Because they're not followers. 
They're not followers. You know, you ever ask somebody sometimes like, yeah, man, I, I, I you know, I, yeah, I kind of have a faith, but I just don't follow it. You know, well, we don't have a religion, so when you say follow, you're following Christ, you're following a person. We don't have a religion, so that mean that's what we live in. We don't have no type of religion because all religions are stuck at the door in the kingdom of darkness system, so we don't do no religion. But most people say, I have a faith, I just don't follow it closely or whatever, you know, so... Most people don't understand that, yeah, you might believe in Christ, but you're not, since you're not a follower, you want the children of disobedience. And you need to learn to be obedient. But that's why I tell people, I like, the first, all I want people to know is that are you, are you saved? Are you born? Are you in Christ? Why? Because once you tell me that, you're a part of the family. So therefore, I know I got the same daddy that you have, or the same father that you have. And whom the Lord loves, he chases. So that's why I love you. Say, you used to say, oh. So God must use me to remind you about what he desired, what his will is. And once I tell you, man, I don't care, man. Yeah, I know the Bible said that, but I'm going to do what I want. Okay. Bless you. <laughs> and I'm going to move out the way. I'm good. Because God's going to use people to remind me. You might get a little away with it. I remember when I was in the world, and uh, my mom and dad had certain standards on me. I will try to go out in the world, and they had people who was doing stuff worse than me. Man, what you doing here? Remind me that this is not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And that was God <laughs> using them to tell me, you know better. <laughs> you know? So God has a way. So when you tell me, you say, oh, go for it then. God, God just stole it. He said, you're storing the wrath for yourself. Y'all understand what that kind of talk is? Well, I had parents. They used to do it. They store that wrapped up. And you, you're thinking like you get whooped from that one incident that you just did this guy on the last night. No, that was stored. And then they're going to bring it up. And you remember the time you this and that. I told you. And you just been acting all week. They're whooping you. That's why I got the brakes in there like that. <laughs> the brakes was the, the hitting. <laughs> you know, that made you right because you're storing up for yourself wrath. That's what God says. You're storing up for yourself wrath. And most people, ah, we're not, you know, we believe in heaven, we have to God. No, you don't have the, the, you know, damnation wrath. You have chastisement wrath of a father who wants you to do better. Okay? No, you don't get no kind. There's no combination of those who are from Adam to in Christ. We get that out of the picture, we're done. For you won't be deceived just riding that out. So don't think the father's going to sit around and let his kids just act up. Whom the Lord loves, he will chase you. He will chase you with the word and stuff like that. No, he won't put sickness and diseases on you. He's constantly trying to warn you to stop doing stuff that causes sickness and diseases to come upon you. But he won't do that. He won't give you AIDS. He won't give you cancer. No, God, don't do that. Don't you talk about Father. Never. Ever, never, ever. That's just like Jesus rebuking a hurricane, thinking that God causes a storm to tear your house down because you ain't acting right. No. They got all kinds of sickness. I'm like, you crazy? That don't make any sense. I wouldn't serve the party like that either. You know, but that's not our father. And I'm here to bring Father God back to the table because we have forgot who he was. And Jesus warned you, says, now in that day, don't ask me nothing. Ask my father who is in heaven. And we don't understand how God's system was set up. Jesus is like, yeah, you're going to ask in my name, but you're going to be asking him. Don't be asking me. I told you to ask him. I want you to use the same person I use. I used to look towards the heavens and say, Father, and, he, and then he, he asked, but he says, now, you, know, now you come in, in my name, but you're going to ask my father. Don't be asking me. And that day, what day? The day after I had resurrected and said it is finished, and I, you know, extended up to heaven and gave gifts to men and sent the Holy Spirit back and said, now in that day, don't be asking me uh, <laughs> all that stuff no more. I'm finished. God has rewarded me, placed everything underneath my feet, but you can ask the father in my name and he would do it for you. He tells you. And the Father will do it for you because you ask the right way. Got to get back to that protocol. This is kingdom protocol in the kingdom system. And God will not void his word because we are ignorant of it. It's time to open up the book and learn the system. Amen. It's time to give. We're not going to spend too much time on it because you guys give out for all throughout the week. But we don't water your seed tonight. We don't take time to do that. It is time to give. And we know that don't store your treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal store treasures in heaven where moths and rust 
cannot destroy it, and thieves do not break in and steal. God says, do not let all your stuff down here. I get a lot of people about that. They, all, they, all their wealth and stuff is wrapped up in the dark kingdom of darkness system. And God says, don't do that. Take that stuff and get it up here in the invisible realm. How do we get that? By sowing. Tithes and offering, you sow. You sow and you get the stuff to go in the, in the invisible realm. And then you have access when you need it. Wherever you are, your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. That's why you want to store some stuff up in heaven before you be heavenly minded, as they say, and not just earthly minded always. So you want to make sure that you do it. Paris has some uh, envelopes if anybody want to give tonight. Uh, those online, all you have to do is hit fioministry.org. I'm going to skip all this because y'all know this. Um, tonight I am skipping that. But fioministry.org and hit I support if you want to give online to support the ministry. Praise God. So let's stand to our feet in water. I'll see you because God told us that when you put a, a spiritual seed and a natural seed in the ground, you still have to water. We water the word with the water, the word of God. Because the word of God comes in what how many forms? Three. And what forms are they? Water. Seed, water, and light. Look at that. The perfect three things you need to grow any plant. Any plant. Plant. You can try that too. But any plant. See, water and light. That's the forms that the word comes in. So now we're going to lease the word in a watery form to where man what you see. Let's go. As you receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for checks in the mail, finding money, debts paid off, expensive decrease, and come on, jobs and better die. Benefits, sales, and commissions, favorable settlements, estates, and inheritance. Interest and income, rebate, come on. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. I have more than enough. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Praise God. Give God a hand clap for the offering. May we receive our offering, our tithes and offerings. We believe in him. We trust him. We trust his system. And therefore, we will always have a need. All our needs are met. Okay, uh, uh, as you can see, we have technical difficulty tonight. I think it's my cable. I didn't buy another connector. But we're going to press on. It's all good. Uh, you just won't be able to probably take uh, picture notes um, as well. You probably have to type a little bit. And if you need to slow down, if it's something you really want to get, let me know. You know I put all the scriptures up there, too, so you can just write the scripture down and go home and get it later on. Because, you know, your pastor does not teach without the word. I don't believe in that. You know, because God's not watching over me. He's watching over his words that's coming out of my mouth by faith that he can perform it. Same thing with you. He's going to watch how much word you got in you that you're going to put out there for I can use in your life. So that's what word is all about. Amen. So we continue our series on deception. This is the second one. in media. And last week we hear a little bit about the, the different names in Matthew 9, 34. Satan, uh, we call him the prince of devils. The prince of devil. The word prince means ruler. And also, in John 14, 30, it says he is prince of this world. This world. And what does world mean? System. System. The organized systems that's on this earth. He's, he's over the systems of this earth. So all these people getting outraged about political stuff. All you're doing is getting uh, outraged over Satan's system. That's why I don't get involved in that. All right, guys, really? Really, guys? When God looks down from heaven, he looks for two things. Kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light. Saint, sinner. His stuff is so uncomplicated. I'm telling you, but they will bog you down. That's what we talk about being you now. How they suck you up into it. They'll get you sucked up all into that. That's not your life. That has nothing to do with you. You're just down here. Now, he's also called the prince of the power of the air in Ephesians 2 2. The prince of the power of the air, or we can say airwaves, because that's where he likes to dominate. He controls the airway. That's why music is so powerful in America and all across the world. They're everywhere you go, music is around. There's not a country that don't have a whole bunch of music going on. <clears throat> and we know that Satan used to be over the music when he was in heaven. According to him, he had instruments in him, so he knows music. He knows the power of music. God created music for power. You know, that's why you read in the Old Testament. When uh, Saul had a demon in him that he would call David, and David played some music on his harp, and they would calm, calm the demonic spirits and Saul down. That's the power of music. 
if music can calm a demon down, it also can deliver one. All right, that's why we were telling you guys, don't touch not uh, everything that you see just because you can. All things are lawful, but all things are not um, expedient to you, meaning that you should not be partaking in everything. Henceforth, which this month is October, which is coming up, we're gonna have what? Halloween, every time we gotta talk about it, and I got Christians who almost wanna, you know, cuss me out if they can't go and put the demon outfit on. Like, go for it. Don't care. I don't argue with people no more. <laughs> you know, Corinthians says, those, let those who are ignorant stay in ignorance. Cool, got it. And I'm not trying to be mean to crass, but when I'm trying to teach you something, I'm like, look, you can do it. I mean, there's a lot of things I knew better to do. Even, even when my mom and dad used to teach me in the natural about certain, you don't go certain places. You don't, you don't go nowhere. The bullets have no names to it. You're not supposed to be certain places. You know, you can go in the devil's den all the time thinking, like, if you put yourself there, just not the lion's den, he didn't put himself there. Somebody else put him there. Now, you put me in the club all tied up and bound, God, the angel's going to protect me. But if I'm going like, yeah, it's my favorite song, yeah. Nah, the angel's like, hey, yeah, you, you go right here. <laughs> you just can't go and do everything that the world does. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You can't do everything they do. When you learn better, you should do better. Out of your ignorance, God's going to try to protect you as much as you can. But once you know something, it's from faith to faith. That's what it is. That's why we're at one faith level, and most people get stuck. All I did, I didn't get that serious. I didn't read that much word. I remember I just, I went a couple times to church, and I gave one time, and God showed up. That's one faith. The next one's over here. You're going to have to get more in your word close to God, and you're going to have to be more continuous. And it's just like lifting weights, holding on your You're not going to grow unless you challenge yourself. And that's how God makes you grow. That's where people get stuck, though. They're like, man, I ain't take that last time I had to do all that. Sit in the gym. <laughs> you know, last time I had to do all that. If you're going to go to the next level, you're going to have to do something different. You got to increase and multiply. Say increase. increase. Say multiply. multiply. That's the first thing God cut loose in Genesis. And he blessed him. And said, be fruitful. Increase and multiply in thoughts, in deeds, in everything you put your hands to. That's the kind of kingdom of God God does. Anything that's not is dead. That's why Jesus got mad and says, if you don't reproduce, I'll cut it off. And I'll take it and I'll throw it in the fire. Why? It's useless. That's why he said earlier that if you don't follow me, you're not really worthy of me. Because you're not going to increase. You're not going to multiply anything. You're not going to fulfill your purpose. Praise God. The media and power of the air that controls our thoughts. Check this out. The key to media, we got a two there. Oh, the key to media is to use use of waves. The air is the source. This same one I had last week, I didn't correct yet. Bad you. The air is the source waves. <clears throat> there are five key types of waves. We talked about this last week, so I'm going to go through them real quick. Air waves, don't forget that. Radio waves. Television waves, they're always telling you a different type of vision. Brain waves, very powerful because music goes and regulate your brain waves. Man, we did musicology. I remember it was in our own church, and we studied musicology on such a level it was just ridiculous. And like, oh my goodness, this is why they push music so much this way. It was just they had music, they had different types of music, different type of frequencies to go in. Even they use music like sometimes it, it caused some people to have seizures, just like the doctor used waves now to try to have correct seizures. It, it, it was it's just a minute. I'm like, wow, wow, just wow. And and but and we, we we perish because we don't know this stuff. Gamma rays, you know, waves contain the power to carry messages and are the power of mediation. Watch this. Whoever controls the air, air controls the waves. Now this is why we get to say he's the prince of the power of the airwaves. I said he wanna control those waves. That's why. So how does he do that? Okay, so we get together, we're gonna make we're gonna make a Christian uh, television show. Uh, you know, a little movie based on the true story. We like to go national, nationwide on the networks. You know how much money it costs us to do that? I see the most silly stuff on TV on prime time. It's senseless, it's useless. I'm like, man, how much they say this stuff costs? And they put it out there just to fill in gaps of space. I don't know. It's just, it's useless information. And they don't do anything. For me, somebody out there tearing it up, well, that's the best thing ever. But me, I mean, like, really, I'm like, I'm thinking how much TV costs. I'm like, how who's paying for this? <laughs> you know, if I want to do something, you know, I'm gonna try to be on Facebook Live. You know, try to get it as route I can. You know, and they still got algorithm to block me on that because I'm talking about Jesus. You know, it's a mess. 
This is the world we live in, but God tells us, don't be ignorant of where you stand. You need to know the cunning devices of the enemy. We do not fall for every cunning device of the enemy. I don't, and I won't allow you to. I'll expose them. We're not here just to be the light, but what? Expose the darkness. That's a two-part scripture. Don't just be the light, but expose the darkness. That's our job. Because you have everything. You never be afraid of nobody or anything in this world. You are more powerful than they are. Greater than he that's in you, than he that's in this world. So we expose darkness. So you have to say some stuff that's not popular. Who cares? It's time to get because people are perishing. Media plays a very important role. It has influenced virtually every aspect of our lives. Newspapers, magazines, radio, television, and the internet are uh, different types of media. It greatly affects our lives because media, say it with me, because what? It has the power to influence our thoughts. The power to influence our thoughts. No, you didn't go buy Pepsi because you just thought it. No, you didn't go get Coke because you just thought it. No Doritos bag. You're getting that up because they're running that ad over and over and over again. And you go to the store and you're like, man, I want some chips. Which one should I get? Well, they already programmed you which one to get. You're going to get Doritos. <laughs> you know, depends on what channel you're on. <laughs> All right? They got you. Just like I said, I was rooting for the enemy to get away in the little movies. They programmed me to like those guys. They're not bad. You know, they just, you know, they just trying to do what they got to do. They're breaking the law. They're running for cops. And I'm rooting for them. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? So, the prince of the power of the hour, for as a man think in his heart, so is he. This is why he want to influence your thoughts. Your thoughts get in, in your heart, and once they take a root, you start acting out your thoughts. Most people do. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. Here's he talking to us. But let God transform you into a new person. Hallelujah. Let God transform you. By how? By changing the way you what? You got to change the way you think. How do you think? That's my wife said. Think about what you're thinking about. How do you think? How do you think? It's supposed to be so simple, the way we think. All systems are supposed to think. The Bible. And by now, most of you who've been around me for a long time, if you talk to me, you're going to ask me how I feel about something. And you know by now you're going to like, what does God say about it? Because that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to give a another. Like, it don't matter what I think anymore. If God says something different contrary to what I'm thinking, I'm about to change my thinking. Now, if I don't know, I hope somebody tell you, hey, you don't know that God talked about this. Like, Man, thank you. I'm going to line myself up. But what God already thinks about the situation. How does God feel about you being a husband, wife, raising kids, having your finances, conduct yourself in business in the world system, the dark system? It's all in here. And this is how you're supposed to think. Now, all believers are supposed to think this way. Unfortunately, they don't. So when we come to dealing with them sometimes, you have to specify and be real specific about what type of believer you're dealing with. You're not there to judge them because they're in Christ. Good. But I don't have to deal with every person who says, uh, I believe in Christ just like you do. That means nothing if you're not following him because I'm trying to follow him. And only those who follow him are supposed to get the benefits of the promises. Everybody who believes in Christ don't get the benefits of the promises. The thief, the, believe the thief from the cross didn't. He just got the end promise. You go into eternity. You pass from time and you go into eternity. That's the end promise. But the in between, is most, most, most everything in this Bible is pushing is you don't have to wait to go to heaven. You can bring heaven to earth. That's what the kingdom of God does. It does for you here and for anyone you want to impart that on. Our job is to bring the kingdom of God on earth. Then you will learn to know that God's will for us, which is good and pleasing and perfect will. So you're going to change the way you think. It says when you start to change the way you think by renewing your mind with the word of God, then you're going to know when you know the word of God, you're going to know God's perfect will. When you know the word of God, you're going to know that it pleases God. When you know the word of God, you're going to know that that's the perfect thing that God thinks about all the time. He so ever watches over the word to make sure it, he performs it. So that's when you're going to know the will of the Father. I just don't get, I get some people who call themselves believers and they kind of pretend like they don't know how God feels about a circumstance, a situation. Like, how come you don't know what God feels about this situation? I talked to some pastors the other day, you know, you name the name. 
and I, because you know the great uh, the great worship of all worship came to our town, uh, Beyonce, and a lot of members skipped Wednesday night service and went there. Not here, <laughs> but there's some places. Hey, you can do that. You know why? Because they believe us. You can do that. There's no coming next those in Christ. But don't whine and cry. And I'm not wishing on nobody. And then people get mad. I say, I know better. God is not obligated to protect me if they start getting some bullets flying in a place like that. You went on purpose knowing that's against God. You can't stick your head in the lion's mouth and think he ain't gonna close down on you. You can't do stuff like that. It's just silly to me. Wisdom is the thing I'm supposed to use. All things are lawful, but all things are not what? Not speed. You should be doing certain things, but I can do what I want. Yes, you can. I did that as a kid. My mom and dad told me don't do some things. I'm telling you, when I did some things, I got myself in trouble. Nothing deep, because I was a good kid. But every time I tried to get out of hand, I always wanted to like, dang. As my old pastor used to tell me, you're going to suffer loss. Yes, I lost something. I lost something. Just from being disobedient. And so this is a life of obedience when you're talking about being a believer and become once that believer says, and also I want to follow him. Follow me. That's the first commandment he gave us, God. Give up your life. They had a fishing business. Give that life up. Now I'm not telling you to quit your job because you have to work. <laughs> but he told them to follow him. The key words you're supposed to follow Christ. Not just believe that he exists and that he once walked the planet. And that he died for your sins. A lot of people tell me a lot of stuff. I just believe God wants me to be happy. I just believe that God wants me to do that. <laughs> you ain't just got to believe that. You can read that. But he has a specific way of how he's going to do it. He says, God wants me to be peaceful and have joy. He'll tell you. And I'm going to keep those who are in perfect peace, who, mind, who keeps their mind on the things of God. That'll keep you peaceful. You know, so you don't have to think. I, I just think. See, what you're saying is I'm creating a God in my own mind that I'm very comfortable with, because I'm not always comfortable with the one that's, that they say that's in that book. So I'm gonna create one in my mind that I'm comfortable with, you know? And then if anybody come and bring me the ones in that, that Bible, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push it away. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna, what God's trying to do, when somebody actually bring you the, the biblical God, that's God's mercy. Surely gives the mercy of Father Mother, he's trying to give you mercy. He's trying to wake you up and give you opportunity. That's why he say he's long suffering. He's trying to give you opportunity to wake up. You know, and so don't be get mad at people when they tell you the truth, because only truth, which is the word of God, spoken in love, will make you free. But some people get upset. Ah, no, I can do what I want. You can. You could have always been that. But you might. That's called submitting to the the, the, the gospel of Christ, submitting to Christ Himself. Do not copy the behavior, the customs of this world. Don't copy them. That's why I said you shouldn't be looking like them all the time in every facet of your life. Every facet. Then you will you should know. Watch this. Media comes from the word medium. Getting deep on you. Media comes from the word medium. Mediums connect between the natural world and the spirit world, which God forbid to use of them because 1931 and Deuteronomy 18, 9, and 21. So basically you got some people, and you see some part on TV and talk shows, they call themselves getting in touch with um, the dead, which they actually get in touch with the demons, because we learn about death. And please ask you to go to read when it tells you that nobody knows what's under the sun what's going on over here once you pass over to the other side. And even Jesus in the parable of the of Lazarus the rich man tells you that no, I don't let nobody go back and try to warn and talk to nobody. A lot of people do a lot of stuff for comfort, they do a lot of stuff for spooky hookiness, but it just ain't biblical. You know, so you you want to be biblically accurate. It's not gonna happen. Not from God. Now you can talk to demons, they will emulate your, your loved ones. Demons does that. They'll emanate your loved ones. You know, just to get you all off guard and have you seduce. That's what God said about seducing spirits. You know, they'll do that. And that's what some of these people who call themselves going a uh, nacrimony, uh, nac nacrimony, whatever call their name. But they deal with the dead. And they go in the spirit realm of the dead and they think they call themselves, I see your grandpa. And he said this. <gasps> How could she know that? Some of it's phony. Some is very real. But all they are talking to a demon, and they're not talking to your, your grandpa or your grandma. You know, because you know, I, if you have a question for me, you send them to me, I'll send you the scriptures. You know, but it's, it's silliness. Enough is enough. I'm ready to go to such a level right now, I'm not playing around with the devil no more. It's, it's enough. You need to know the truth to make you free. Uh, watch this. If you are born again, 
Oh, I should say part about medium, which God forbid and use, right? If you are born again, believer, and born again, that means to me, meaning born again in the spirit of Christ, you are in Christ, you are from another place, you are from a spirit realm. God said, I set you in heavenly places. That's an invisible realm where God said, I said, I already set you there. My spirit is from there, and God says, I already set you there legally. Legally, you are positioned with God. Legally, when you speak, you're speaking from the throne room of God. Legally, you have every right and privilege as you've been there already. Legally, you just learn this stuff and meditate on it and know who you are. I want you to be bold in this because the media is going to come right behind me and give you a movie, a song, and make you feel about that tall and think your life is worthless and you ain't never stardust and dirt and stupid stuff. I'm trying to tell you right now, hear from the word who God says about you. And this is what we're going to go with. This is how you live your life. You live by what God says. Nobody else. How convincing, how intellectual they sound, how dressed up they are, how famous they are. We don't care. If they don't say the word of God, we don't listen to them. We don't listen to them. Because Satan dressed them up real good. He comes as an angel of light. And he's going to get you. He's good at this job. That's why you got to be better at yours. You are rooted and grounded in the word so much when you hear something, nah, that, 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 that just don't sit right. That don't sound right. God says, test every spirit to make sure it's of the faith. You know, so you don't sit around just listening to anybody or anyone. Your media might be interfering with your community. Watch this. You from a spirit around. Your media, meaning the stuff you watch and listen to and read, it might interfere with your communication between your home country, which is the kingdom of heaven. Yes. That's why we always talk about the fast. What does the fast do? We know that the fast cuts the flesh off. We know that we're a spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a body, an earth dirt suit. But the fast, it cuts the earth suit off. Why? Because we have listened to so much garbage from the media that our flesh is so strong. I mean, he's yoked with that stuff. So when your spirit and your soul have a conversation, he comes and talk to y'all guys. What y'all talking about? Oh, no, we ain't doing that. We're going to do it this way. It's going to park you. So what you got to do to make him see he's big and strong, because you stop feeding me for a couple of days, I ain't going <laughs> to And LA, man, it's like, you know, you get so tired, it's all the time. You ever been there like that? You been so tired, you like, and somebody, hey, man, what you, man, whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> That's what the fast is all about. You cut that bad boy off. And you're going to have a spirit to soul talk. And it's going to be the most glorious thing you ever seen. That's why Jesus did it 40 days so fast. Oh, 40 days so fast. He probably did. <laughs> he, he, he fasted for 40 days. <laughs> and his soul uh, benefited from it. And there was just the spirit of soul coming. And like, he ain't, he ain't food the flesh. And everything that Satan tried to give him was based on the flesh. And you can't ignite the flesh. It's already dead. He killed it. He said, Satan, you got nothing on me. Why? I'm already dead. That flesh is dead. Don't even try to get a rise out of it. It ain't going to run. Why? It's gone. You got the spirit and the soul. And you tell the flesh, come on, ladies. Let's go over here. <laughs> come on, faith. Let's go over here. <laughs> you know? It's done. But that's what the fast is all about. And I'm learning so much stuff about the benefits of the fast. You know? Here's the thing. I'm telling you, oh, you know something good. In the kingdom of darkness, you know, we don't really call on God for much. We should. And we're going to learn how to, from the headache to the allergies. We should go to God. All right? And we don't just medicate yourself. Unless they got something, a miracle plant, plant, not chemical plant, that God gave somebody wisdom and said, hey, I got this plant. You take this plant, your allergy be gone. We go for that. Because God made all that. It is good. That's God. All right? So the earth is the Lord, the foot is the earth. But chemicals. So I got doctors, man. I was watching the show the other day. It's funny. This guy, guy he got, this, he got people losing weight who's obese. <laughs> he's vulgar. <laughs> but he's accurate. I couldn't listen to everything. He's just, you know, he's one of the guys from another country. And that's what he talked. But he was talking about the, uh, the snake diet. <laughs> Sounded like Satan. <Satan-Dunk. laughs> but then the snake diet was based on, like, the bears. Do they eat all this food and they hibernate for years and come out and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, they build up. But that ain't what the problem is. He's, he's basically saying, our obese people in America, you are the bear. <laughs> you, you need to go hibernate. <laughs> in other words, because right now we get into this new diet as they get out there and now everybody's doing um, you know, fasted cardio and all this kind of stuff, which is great. I say any type of fast is good. But the problem 
The guy was all over. He's talking about, look, they just need to uh, fast. Stop eating. Period. And, you know, people just freaking out. Oh, man, if you do that, they'll starve to death. It's like no fat person will ever starve to death. <laughs> they try to compare them to the people who are in Africa who ain't got nothing on them anyway. <laughs> you know? So that's what they're trying to use. So the guy was all over, and he, he had a panel of doctors sitting up there, and they were just, oh, they just, ah, shut them up. They thought, ah. Oh. And he was eating, he's showing all the proofs and all the stuff. You know what he gave them, guys? And I ain't promoting them. I'm just saying it's because it, it's about the facts to me, not just about his program. But he says, I give them salt water, they build up the electrolytes, and that's all they drink. And the rest, they got all that fuel on them. We're going to use that fuel. That was his attitude. And he just, blunt, 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 blunt. You don't need that. He said, I'll fast you for uh, so many hours, and then we'll let you eat a little bit, then we'll fast you again, we're going to burn all the fuel. And he had so many people. Uh, one person said she had a tumor uh, healed on the head from fasting. I I'm telling you guys, and then God says, man, should what? Always fast. Now, why I'm telling you this? Well, in the kingdom of darkness, this is in that panel of doctors, they scream bloody murder. Absolutely not. And I'm doing that on purpose to show you this is how much resistance you're going to get when you decide to do something that's biblical. Jesus fasted for how long? How long? 40 days. What do you think that panel would have told you? First of all, you can't be God. Don't you have no people following you because nobody around here should be doing no 40 day fast. And you know he wasn't obese. So, I only use that example not to promote somebody, and there's some guy, you can use it if you want, go look at it, YouTube, whatever. My whole point is to show you the type of world. This is how different our minds got to be now. Because I'm tired. I'm tired of playing games with this world. We're supposed to be operating a whole different place, and we, and we can't, they'll dictate to us not to do that. Not good. And they're going to tell you all the scientific reasons why they, why they think. Science. <laughs> you know, the study of. <laughs> you know, yeah, they're going to tell you not to do God's word. From science, they're going to tell you, we're going to use science. We're going to use my experience not to do God's word. We're going to use, I have heard. So and so did it, and they didn't have to do it. You experience the wrong thing all the time. People say, I'm going to use my experience. That's the worst. What if I experience the wrong thing? You know, you don't use your experience. You know, you experience divorce, you're going to go and tell us marriage don't work. That's what you're going to do. That's your experience. You experience the wrong stuff. So I can't use my experience. Use the word of God only. Watch this. You are born again. Watch this. Your media might be interfering with your communication. So, yeah, when you listen to that stuff, that's what I say. I'll tell you, turn it off. If you can't do it like I do, I'm looking at it like, you're kidding me. They put that out there? Oh, my God. They're saying this. And they're saying that. You know, if you can't do that, because I got an active mind, if it's set of God before my eyes, well, that's what my God does. My brain's like, that's crazy. What are they saying? Oh, they're trying to make people think this. You see the stories, man? They have a whole two hour movie, and God's not involved in none of it. He won't be mentioned. It would be as he do not even exist. Because man is trying to be God all by himself in all those movies that I watch. Then they start thinking, oh, you're scared of dying? Don't worry, we're working on that too. We're going to take your consciousness and put it in the machine, a robot, or whatever we can make up. You know, that's because they, they really still don't believe in God. God didn't already gave us the blessed thing. We're going to get a glorified body. We're going to live forever. But yet, you get somebody who's a believer, definitely not a follower. They'll fall for that stuff. And I'm like, what are you saying? Don't you know the word of God is against that? Yeah, I know the Bible says that, but you're not a follower. That's what's up. I can't be hanging around you just because you're still a believer. I'm, I'm following this. I'm following all of it, you know. So you, 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 that's going to cause you to bump heads. Because they say, I'm a Christ too. It's like us in the last day, they're going to say, I'm a Christ too. You know, and that's what happens. You're going to see a lot of people say, yeah, and you are God. God gave you instructions for them guys. He says, those who continue to operate in their flesh, he's talking about, he's talking about brothers, brothers and sisters. These are people who are already saved. Who continue to operate in their flesh from such, turn them away. It's very hard to do because some of them might be family members. <laughs> now, what I'm not saying, I did not say don't have anything to do with them. I didn't say that. 
We mean by turning away is you cannot spend majority of your time with that. It's like watching a two hour movie when you hang around. That media is going to affect your judgment. And you already know they decide this is far I'm going to go with God. This is all I'm going to do. I don't think it takes all that. Once you figure out where they're at, it's okay. I don't have a no problem having nobody like that. It's just that I cannot spend the majority of the time. It's like sitting there watching a the movie. Now you're going to be like me, have me watching the Fast and Furious already trying to get criminals to run away. I'm like, no. Yes, ma'am. Good word. What's Sean going to say? I know she's going to say. You resemble the people who you assemble. And you can put it this way on a constant basis. If I only see you every once in a while, you ain't going to have a big effect on me. But if I got to go to work every day, next thing you know, I remember I joined the military and I was in the church board. And the first thing they introduced to is curse words. You know, I'm a Christian boy. I grew up and I joined the military. And the first person they introduced, they didn't care. <laughs> they get you robbed about They curse you out. I'm like, Wait, really? You got to say that? Yeah, Shelly, no. It wasn't a good year and a half before I started using my first cuss word. The first time I realized it, I'm calling back home long distance to my mom, and I'm talking, and one slips out. I'm like, oh my God, did I? You resemble who you assemble. I had no guard. I didn't set up nothing. Didn't phase me. I was just around it all the time. <laughs> you know? So that's how it happens, man. You, you just can't get caught up. Media is affecting us. Watch this. Good one, by the way, Paris. Satan is good at what he does. He knows how to make bad things attractive and addictive. Not only is it attractive, he makes it addictive. Because now you got me to the point where that's my favorite show. And all they do is blaspheme God and cuss. Don't get me wrong, I'm not innocent from this, guys. I, watch, I love movies. Some of them I don't touch with a 10-foot pole. It's just ridiculous. Some of them, man, that, that stuff is there. And I'm thinking about the people like, I got some stuff where I can, like, ugh. You know, and I'm thinking about the people who don't have that much worry. How much they doing? I, I'm still, I got to find out. Somebody probably emailed me or text me. I'm still trying to find out in the spirit realm what happens when you use the F-bomb. Because that is the curse word of all curse words when it comes to media. F-bomb. F-bomb is the one. They got many curse words, but the F-bomb sets off something in the spirit realm that does great damage because they like using it. They even, watch this out, all the curse words, that's the only one they use to rate the movie. How many F-bombs in? Not the other stuff, the F-bomb. So words have what? Death and power to power to tongue. The The F-bomb does something. People like using for some It's a powerful something to say. But that's what they rate our system by. How many of us? So when you walk up to a movie and they start it off that way, you got three shot off in the first 10 rounds. Like, oh, you guys to go. I know how this is going to turn out. It's, it's a mess. It's messing up your spirit. And you don't even know. It's, it's creating a disconnect. And when you need to hear from God, you're like, what's wrong with me? You didn't block that. You know, so for such turn away, God tells you to guard your eyes, guard your ears, and a lot of stuff, guys. Social media is very addictive. It has destroyed lives in every area of our life, from families, friends, individuals, self-esteem, etc. One of the biggest problems with social media is that the self-image relies mainly on others and their opinion. Your image is coming from them. I mean, I've seen people choose, this is what they say, yes to the dress, but somebody else shows it. <laughs> you know, for social media, you know? You can't do nothing on your own. <laughs> you know, everybody's making decisions for you. And you people are like, oh, no, I like man, somebody else told you to do that. No, I'm not my own person. No, you're not. Watch this. Why didn't you post this instead of this? Because you had to think mentally about how it would be received before you post it. So they're controlling you. And that's why you ain't saying that about Jesus. <laughs> Because they're controlling you. <laughs> All right? That's why you don't need boldness. You, but I don't have boldness. You have confidence, not in yourself, but who you got a revelation who God just said you were. You got to believe that. Because they're going to come at you. You ain't nobody. Who you think you are? Look at you. See, now that stuff fazes me. I don't know who you're talking about. 
I already got mine who I am. My identity comes from God. Watch this. Let me get this in real quick. I know we're out of time. The battle of the mind. Watch this. I like this. When you control opinion as corporate America controls opinion in the United States by owning the media, you can make the masses believe almost anything you want and guide them as you please. You can... That, it's amazing how somebody sitting on their high horse with so much pride and says, we can make them believe anything we want. And the sad thing is, your pastor almost believed that way because I see it all the time. But they can just put some stuff out there. It ain't used to be that way. When I grew up, okay, people knew a little better. Like, oh, no, no, no. They couldn't just do Now, social media has flooded so much that you can say anything. Like, hey, what you want to have them to do today? Have everybody go to the right. Like the dance, to the left, to the left, to the right. They can just put it out there and you do it. You know, I'm like, wow, it's a, you're experiment. You're, you're a loud rat experiment now. And you're right for the picking for the spirit of the Antichrist to just dominate the world. Because we're all hooked and addicted. Five questions that the kingdom of darkness and me is trying to define for you. We can close with this. Just try to define who you are. Who am I? Where am I from? You just stardust. You're just a, 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 a CO2 and an explosion, ball of gas. They're going to tell you where you're from. Really? Why am I here? Well, you're just by accident. That's why people commit suicide, because they have no value in themselves if they think that way. Sin comes to what? Heal, still is destroyed. So he wants you to think that way. So when you're off yourself, it's no big deal anyway. Watch this. What can I do? We can, you can only do what I tell you to do, according to thy media. Where am I going? Nowhere fast if you don't get no Lord in your life. <laughs> Praise God. Let me stop. I must be getting late. <laughs> Where am I going? Watch this. These are the very five things that Christ has come down to secure who we are in him. The same thing that media is trying to do, Satan's media, is the same thing that Jesus came down here to secure us. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? Where am I going? That's why in this ministry, that's all I try to talk to you about. I try to hit those areas to let you know who you are, where you're from, why you're here, what you can do, where am I going? These are questions that men still been living on the planet for years, still have the question mark above their head. I have removed the question mark. I know who I am. I know where I'm from. Why I'm here, I got a job to do. What can I do? I'm learning more and more. Where am I going? I already got that secure too. That's why I have confidence. Those questions are answered in my life. And you need to have them answered in your life. And once you, uh, as they say, once they get established in your life, that's when the boldness come up. And the confidence come up. You're not afraid anymore. Perfect love casts away fear. Because media is designed to make sure you always have, have a question mark over your head. It's going to cause fear. And it's going to stop you and limit you in what you can do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I know that was one of our most cheerful messages, but it was the most truthful messages. The ones that get you thinking and get you going to go home and say, look here, the media, man, I got to check this stuff out. Stay point, because it's just, it's just out there. It's there. It's so easy to get to. And it, it's, it's doing something to you. It's making you doubt God. People who know the word, doubt God's word uh, for situations that they can apply the word of God to, but the media has talked you down off the wall. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you always show up, Lord, for us, Lord. You're always giving us good nuggets and stuff to bring us and let us answer those questions, Lord, of who we are and where we're from and why I'm here and what I can do and where I'm going, Father. We thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, down here to secure us in that, Lord, that we don't have to have no fear, but your perfect love that is casting away that type of fear in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Praise God for that word tonight. God is good.